Federal Reserve Chairman Jay Powell back on Capitol Hill today for day two of his testimony. He will be in front of the House Financial Services Committee this morning. Stocks tumbled yesterday after his comments that rates may have to go higher to rein in inflation. Watch this. The latest economic data have come in stronger than expected. If the totality of the data were to indicate <clears throat> that faster tightening is warranted, we'd be prepared to increase the pace of rate hikes. Joining me now is the Bear Traps Report founder and New York Times bestselling author, Larry McDonald. Larry, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. I want to get your take on Jay Powell yesterday. What did you make of the speech? Well, it's kind of like uh, he's overcooking the goose. Um, you know, they're playing catch up. And while they were doing quantitative easing in 2021, uh, inflation started to rage. And now they're trying to catch up. Our, Maria, our 21 Lehman systemic risk indicators that look at equity and credit point to the, one of the highest probabilities of a crash in the stock market looking out 60 days. Wow, 60 days? You're saying you're going to see it? We're going to see a crash in the stock market within 60 days? Yes, because um, the, the withdrawal of capital from the middle class families is so spectacular. For, uh, for every 1%, Increase now. A lot of these economists and Wall Street people they throw around. Oh, the Fed's hiking basis, you know, 100 basis points, 50 basis points. The bottom line is, for every one percent increase in rates, and we've done almost five percent now, uh, every one percent takes 50 billion dollars out of the pockets of middle class families. Uh, auto loans right now are approaching 14 percent. Almost 20 percent of auto loans are a thousand a month, and so the middle class families are getting hammered here and so the consumer pressure is you know violent but on on the high end you know the, the wealthy are doing well with excess savings and higher interest rates yeah well look i'm glad you brought up rates because we're talking about the two year above five percent today mortgage rates uh just out moments ago the 30-year fixed rate up again now to 6.79 percent last week i mean larry the last time we saw mortgage rates shoot up this way we saw real demand destruction people were walking away from their mortgages a new fannie mae survey finds americans are pessimistic about their personal financial outlook 31 percent of americans said that they expect the their personal finances to improve over the next year. But that's the lowest reading since 2010. Larry, before you get into what we're looking at in terms of rates and the impact, I want to bring Adam Johnson in here because he's on the other side of this trade. Adam, you're not expecting yeah. a recession. No, I'm not expecting a recession. And, and my argument is that the two E's of earnings and employment. Employment's at an all-time high. And earnings, while not stunning, are better than field, uh, feared. And revenues are actually rising 5%. Larry, I'm curious. You, you made the comment that there's some sort of pending crash coming up in, in 60 days. Uh, I mean, that's a pretty Within bold statement. Days. I mean, that's what he's getting from his Lehman indicators. He talks I mean, to so many institutions every day. Go ahead. But, but I mean, 60 days, Larry, I mean, are you really, do you really believe that your, your indicators are, are, are right and that there's some sort of crash when you have the most amount of people ever making the most amount of money, ever spending the most amount of money ever, and it's translating into earnings that, uh, while not stellar, are, are enabling revenues to actually rise? Go ahead, Larry. Well, remember, um, if you have $10 million, in the stock market two years ago, you're flat, okay? So there's a lot of people that have had money in the market for a long time, all these failed rallies, that's beating on the psychology of investors, number one. Number two, $10 million in cash today generates $510,000 a year in treasuries, in one, you know, one year treasuries. Wow. Okay, think about that. A year ago, you're talking, this was $70,000. We have to do the math here, okay? Common sense. So you're, you're even in the market, you've been in the market for two years in these moronic fang stocks that have gone nowhere, right? The most crowded trade on earth. You're flat to down after two years. And now you're looking over at a money market fund or a one year treasury and you get $510,000 of interest risk free when a year ago you were getting 70. All right. In other Who words, what, what you're trade? saying, Larry, what you're saying, Larry, if I'm hearing you right, I'll, 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 I'll let you run with this, uh, is that effectively that the, 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 the average investor is smart enough to recognize there's now a choice between stocks and bonds. So that average investor is going to say, I'm going to sell my stocks and I'm going to go buy bonds and just make 5%. Is that basically where you're getting the notion? Yeah, that's that, exactly what he said. Right? There's real competition now 
out to stocks. If I'm going to make half a million dollars in fixed income, what the hell am I, uh, right. you know, dithering around in the stock market if, in fact, I'm worried about a profit recession? Is that right, Larry? Maria, let me ask you a question. Maria, Elaine Gazzarelli in the 80s, right? And, and you were probably too young for this, right? I remember she Elaine Gazzarelli. No, no, I remember. She was a real you know, long-time bull. Well, she was a long-time bull, but you know what flipped her is her model. She had this risk-free model versus equities, and it made her so famous because in the summer of 2007, the risk-free rate up went up so much, she flipped to bearish because of that risk-free rate threat to equities. I'm seeing a similar dynamic now. Another an incredible stat is twos, tens, or 100 basis points inverted. So that means the two-year treasury is 100 basis points more than tens. That's threatening. But then on top of that, you look at the underperformance of the regional banks. So your regional banks are your classic canary in the coal mine. They're underperforming the S&P by like six, seven, eight percent over the last six, nine months a year. So the regional banks are telling you something really bad is happening under the surface in commercial real estate, auto loans, residential. There's really massive cracks under the surface. And that's why the market probably goes down 10, 20 percent, maybe 30 percent the next 60 days. 10, 20, 30 percent in the next 60 days. What do you do and what do you say about the jobs picture? We've got the February jobs you put out on Friday. We're waiting on ADP. It's going to be out in 30 minutes time. We'll see what the ADP numbers show in 30 minutes. But for the jobs number, we're expecting 203,000 jobs added to the economy, Larry. I mean, we're expecting the unemployment rate to hold steady at 3.4 percent. The ADP report, which is out in 30 minutes, is also expecting job growth of 200,000 private sector jobs. So how do you have a recession? How do you have a stock market sell off, a crash when we get this kind of job growth? Well, if you look back at 2000, right, the biggest number in jobs right before the 2000 drawdown, 2000, 2000, 2001, the strongest number in the previous like year and a half was literally right before the market buckled. And one of the weird things is, and Adam's alluding to this, and I can see what Adam's making a good point, jobs are strong. But if you look at, when, when I talk to behind me, we run an institution, institutional chat with about 650 institution in, in, investors around the world. And one of the things they're talking about is when you have this January number that was so spectacular, yeah. it's gotten a lot of people excited about a soft landing. But if you look back the last 20, 30 years, when you have this seasonal adjustment in January, typically the February, when you have that spectacular kind of outperformance, which is seasonal, typically there's like a mean reversion in February and March. And that's why you probably get like some nice uh, move down in jobs, which will give the, which actually help the Fed a little bit. If, if we unemployment goes up, it'll, it'll give the Fed a little breathing room, yeah. right? So that may in some ways help. But in that case, you want to be long gold miners and things that will benefit emerging market equity, things that will benefit from the Fed cutting rates. Well, I, I will say Stephanie Pomboy has been calling for this for a while. But real quick, Larry, uh, based on all of your research and your conversations with all those institutions, where do you hide away from gold? Is that it? I mean, gold is a hedge. You, you say buy the gold miners in the stock market. Are there any other areas to hide within the stock market if, in fact, these predictions are right, that we're going to see a stock market crash within 60 days? Okay, one of the things we're looking at is from, from 2001 to 2003, four, I was on the Lehman trading floor in that period. And when you went around the trading floor after the, after the dot-com crash, the most popular investment was European global equities. And if you look at a chart, Adam can pull this up for you later, but if you look at a chart of the global equities, XUS, okay, global equities, um, X United States, versus the NASDAQ versus the S&P, you're breaking a multi-year down channel. You're talking about 10, 15 years of massive outperformance from the United States. Now, for the first time, you're seeing spectacular outperformance from global equities, MSCI, XUS, which we would say. That is where the outperformance is going to be. Well, I mean, look, okay. Uh, what you're saying is that U.S. stocks sell off and Europe doesn't. I have a hard time. I have a hard time believing that. That in fact, if the U.S. sells off, we get a stock market crash. The rest of the world doesn't follow, and that MSCI index is loaded with Chinese stocks. So there's that issue as well. The China threat. 
Yes, uh, the EWU, well, first of all, you're 100% right. In the initial drawdown, the European equities will, will, will underperform with the U.S., but they'll outperform the U.S. over the next two years. Okay. The EWU portfolio is a golden portfolio of value global equities, EW. It's, it's referenced as the United Kingdom, but it's really, it's a Hall of Fame basket of, like, global value equities. Yeah. That's, I think, that hard asset basket, that's the basket that's going to outperform um, what we call financial assets in the United States, so okay. growth stocks. All right, Larry, we'll be watching. Is there a trigger for this stock market crash? Is it more inflation data? Is it more economic data that misses estimates? Uh, the trigger will be, like, the S&P earnings, everybody's expecting, the street is expecting $226. Yeah. That's priced for perfection. So what happens is when, when we deteriorate in jobs the next two, three months, that will bring into question the S&P earnings, okay. and the S&P earnings are probably 190, so that'll, that'll trigger it. And, th and that's the Stephanie Pomboy narrative. That's what she's been saying on this program now. It's going to be a profits recession. Uh, well, I guess that's what makes the market, Larry. You're, uh, if you're selling, it looks like Adam's going to be buying. I am buying. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <I> am. <laughs> that's what makes a market. Larry McDonald, it's great to see you, sir. Thank you so much.